Good morning, it's Jeremy. It's Monday, January the 24th. Uh, we're in a terrific cold spell here in Toronto. Uh, today I want to talk about uh, VOR, VHF Omnidirectional Range. And in the previous two posts, the first post I looked at trying to receive um, a, a Doppler VOR signal from Pearson Airport at my location. So we did a splat um, propagation analysis and the signal was pretty weak because it was about a 19 kilometer path and there were some many um, knife edge reflections or refractions from various buildings. So what I was hoping to do was to be able to look down on the VOR, in other words, at altitude as if I was a plane. So there's a local hill here where I live called Briar Hill. So I climbed up there and um, on the profile, it's around um, 200 meters. Uh, so it has, it looks down on the VOR, but the trouble is there's so many big buildings in the path. So I wasn't able to actually uh, receive the signal. So what I did was basically took a signal capture very close to the, uh, to the, the VOR. At Pearson, there's two of them. There's um, one at 116.55 megahertz and another one at 112.15. So that's not optimal because when you look at the uh, the VOR, you're kind of below the counterpoise. So you're not seeing the real antenna pattern. But in any case, um, it was good enough. Uh, in the second post, what I looked at is I, I um, did some research. There's some excellent papers there. There's a good Wikipedia article. And there's an article about the theory of the D, the Doppler VOR, which I've referenced uh, in the references. And so I built a psycho simulation. So in this um, particular post, what I wanted to do was see if the um, what I simulated was correct. So basically what I did was I went out and um, I used the RTL with a horizontal whip antenna. And I was able to receive it on SDR sharp. There's my uh, signal capture. I stored it as a WAV file. So in other words, you can capture the raw bandwidth and store it as a WAV file. And I did the same thing in GNU radio. The important thing here, I think, is that um, in Psychos, for instance, you can simulate practically everything, but there's not a lot of hardware interface with Psychos. Basically, they're WAV files. So the power of GNU radio and Psychos is you can do all your mathematical simulation in Psychos, and then you can test it out with a hardware interface. So with GNU radio, there's an excellent interface for the RTL. So let's look at the um, uh, GNU radio here. So this is the interface I used with the, my, my RTL SDR. Uh, this is the FM receiver um, that I used, uh, I think, four or five posts back. So basically, you, see, you have a, 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 G, a range variable here. I set it at 112.15. That's one of the VORs at Pearson. And then I saved, um, I did a capture and I saved it to um, a file sync here. So that's how I captured my signal. Then um, I played it back just to make sure that I had it correctly. So we can do that. Let's play the signal back here. And I'm just low pass filtering it at 20 megahertz. So we can hear our audio here. We can hear the Morse identifier. That's the tone here at 1020. It's an AM modulated tone. There it is there at 1020 kilohertz. Um, we can increase the uh, FFT size here and then we can see all the detail. It's beautiful. So I, what I can do here is I can expand around the um, center carrier here. So there's my center carrier here, and there's my 30 hertz AM modulated tone. That's the north magnetic reference tone, 30 hertz, which my AM modulates the carrier. And we can go here and expand outwards. So this is a subcarrier 9960. Okay, so there's my subcarrier, and we can see that it's it's over modulated here. According to the specification, or according to the references I read, the FM deviation is 480 hertz. If the modulating tone is 30, that means there's an, a modulation index of 16, so you're really driving this thing. So you can see there, um, that's 9.93, 9.96, so these tones are all spaced by um, 30 hertz. OK? 
Okay, so that's the um, that's the FM modulation frequency. So the next thing I did was I to look at the 30 hertz tone in particular. I took the sample file here. I low pass filtered it at 500 hertz. That gets rid of the AM um, Morse tone and it gets rid of the subcarriers. And then I band pass filtered it for 30 hertz to pick out the uh, 30 hertz tone. So let's just look at that. So I'm going to go into control panel here. I'm going to uh, trigger it and I'm going to increase the x-axis here. So there's my uh, 30 hertz tone at 33.3 milliseconds. Now in this particular uh, post, um, I've got my 30 hertz and I'm showing the 30 hertz variable signal on the FM. Um, I haven't, because I'm not uh, above the VOR, I haven't actually um, shown the 30 hertz demodulated and uh, compared the two, the reference signal and the 30 hertz demodulated from the FM. I haven't compared the two to, to show the, um, the angle approaching a magnetic north. I haven't done that in this particular post. Uh, maybe in a later post, I'll try and build a complete receiver where you compare the phases of the two 30 hertz signal captures. But I just wanted to see if the components were correct in this particular uh, expose.